Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Kylie. If you're new, and today, yes, absolutely, I am reviewing Friday. Th what? Not Friday the 13th, I'm reviewing Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors. This movie came out in 1987 and received a 74% on Rotten Tomatoes, and here's what happened. During a hallucinatory incident, young Kristen Parker has her wrist slashed by dream-stalking monster Freddy Krueger. Her mother, mistaking the wounds for a suicide attempt, sends Kristen to a psychiatric ward where she joins a group of similarly troubled teens. One of the doctors there is Nancy Thompson, who had battled Freddy some years before. Nancy senses a potential in Kristen to rid the world of Freddy once and for all. So as always, I will start with my fun facts and then I'll get into my review of the movie. The original premise of this movie involved Freddy haunting the people who made the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies. However, it was rejected by the studio, but then Wes Craven obviously used it later for his new Nightmare movie. For one week during filming, Robert England was working 24 hours a day. By day, he was filming his TV series Downtown and by night he was filming this movie. Which on that note, I'm not surprised. People in the movie industry are literally insane. They can stay away for just ungodly amounts of hours at a time. I worked on a movie set once and there was one day where we had to be there from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. <sighs> ungodly. Okay, so I'm not surprised. Speaking of Robert England, he apparently wrote a treatment for this movie, but it wasn't used. This is the only film in the franchise not to begin with a nightmare sequence. Penelope Sudro, who played the character Jennifer, who claimed she was going to be a TV star someday, actually went on to become a very popular TV actress. If you've seen the movie, you know about the uh, Freddy snake. So apparently the original Freddy snake came out looking much too phallic. The crew also only had one hour to film that scene so they didn't really have time to fix it. So what they did is they just kind of threw that like green goop on it to get rid of the pinkish hue so it wouldn't look as much like a, uh... yeah. That scene was actually also filmed backwards and then was played in reverse for the movie. Robert England is also known for improvising a lot of his one-liners and one of his most popular ones is actually in this movie. For instance, during the scene where he kills the girl in the TV, the line written in the script was, this is it Jennifer, your big break on TV. And they filmed two takes like that, but then the third time Robert England said, Welcome to primetime, bitch. And Chuck Russell could not decide which version he liked better, so he actually cut the two together and used both of them in the movie. And according to IMDb, that was Freddy's defining one-liner. Okay, so this is gonna be a spoiler-filled review, so hopefully you have seen it, but it is a very old movie. I'm gonna start with the good things about the movie and then the things that I didn't like so much, and then I will give my overall thoughts. So to start with the good things, Nancy's back. The girl, Nancy, she's back. I liked her performance in this movie. I thought that her character development since the first film was really good. This movie takes place six years after the original and in this one she's a very poised young woman and she's now helping troubled teens much like how she used to be one herself. The music is back. The score of the original movie is back in this one which is just such an amazing choice and I'm so glad because if you saw my review of part two you would know that I love the Nightmare on Elm Street soundtrack so much. Just kind of became an instant favorite of mine. Some of the practical effects are really cool and on that note one of my favorite scenes is the puppet master Freddy scene where he's like above the building and he's using this kids like ligaments out of his arms and legs to control him like a puppet. That was so creative to me and I thought it was pretty well done. Like I felt very squeamish when that was going on when his ligaments were being ripped out of his body. Very uncomfortable and I felt like that held up pretty well for it being done in the late 80s. Also the CGI of that scene was not bad probably because Freddy was just like up in the clouds and he didn't have to look super crisp or anything but I thought that that scene looked really good. On that note the characters in this movie are pretty likable. Like um the stakes just feel a lot higher because they are truly sweet and good kids. In prior movies and in a lot of slashers, they're just all oh, the, the characters are just all these like cookie cutter annoying people who all basically have like the same personality and they're just annoying and they're just meat bags, you know, just there to die. But what I really like about the Nightmare franchise so far is that aside from the first one, the characters are actually really likable and you find yourself rooting for them and that makes the suspense a lot higher and you just get more scared, I guess, or maybe it's just me. I don't know. That makes me more scared because I don't want these kids to die. So it keeps me on the edge of my seat more because I'm like, wait, no. I love their ability to lucid dream. I thought that their individual powers were really cool. On that note, this was more of a superhero movie to me than like a horror movie, but I'll get into that. But each of their unique abilities were really cool because on that topic, the message of this movie was super cool because what society might deem as a weakness in you might actually lead to a strength that you don't even know you possess. And that was also part of Nancy's character development in helping these teens realize their powers and realizing that they aren't weak, that they actually are quite a lot stronger than most people and they all have the ability to take Freddy down. So going 
back to Freddy, I thought, again, Freddy looked really good in this movie. I really liked a lot of the locations that they filmed in. Like, the Hall of Mirrors scene was super cool, especially because a lot of that was practical effects, which is very impressive for the time. Like, it didn't age spectacularly well, but it still looks pretty good considering this movie came out, like, 30 years ago. Well, over 30 years ago. And like I mentioned, the Puppet Master Freddy scene was another one of my absolute favorites, and a lot of the other locations were really cool, but on that note, well, no, wait, okay, I'll, I'll circle back to this because there were things about the locations and practical effects I didn't like, but I'll get into that in a bit. One of the last things that I want to point out about this movie that I really liked was Freddy's backstory. I mean, it was awful, but it was a very interesting way to explain why Freddy is what he is. Granted, I hate rape in movies. It makes me so uncomfortable. However, the fact that they did this more tastefully and told the story through his mom's dialogue rather than show when it comes to rape, tell, don't show. You feel me? Just a very triggering thing, not something I want to see on screen. So I really appreciated that they didn't do that. And also just conceptually the fact that like what thousands or whatever of these terrible men were raping this one woman over and over and that Freddie is just the product of all of that violence and that anger and hatred and Ooh, psychopathy. Physically possible? No, but horrifying and a good plot point? Yes. However, on that note, I am now going to transition into the stuff that I didn't like, and one thing I didn't like actually kind of involved his mom because one major thing about this movie is that I just feel like they're changing the rules again. Now not only does Freddy exist, but his mom is a ghost that can interact with people. So now in this world, there is, there's also ghosts, not just Freddy. There's this rule in writing that I took, a, I took a screenwriting class a couple semesters ago, and one major rule in writing that they teach you is don't use the double mumbo jumbo, okay? If wizards are a major part of your story, don't also bring zombies into the equation, you feel me? So like, Freddy is a very unique and interesting monster, so I would say like, maybe don't also bring ghosts into the equation. It's just a bit much, and it kind of makes it hard to suspend your display belief, which already is very hard with these movies. So just, that's a small thing though. I just, I just didn't really like that. And then going back to the locations that Freddy took them to. So some of them are really cool, um, but some of them felt kind of uninspired and just like were whatever to me. And also there was none of the like boiler room stuff. There was, I think like a brief moment in a basement with one of the, one of those like old wood burning stove kind of a things, but we weren't ever taken back into Freddy's actual lair, which was one of my favorite parts of the first movie. And I just would have preferred some of that consistency, I guess. Because again, it's like they keep bending the rules and on that topic. So I did like all of these teens like abilities when they could like lucid dream and stuff. However, when they all started to dream together, yes, it makes sense in that they would all be in Freddy's world at the same time because I believe Freddy's world is like a tangible place they could all be in, but they weren't actually in Freddy's lair. Like they were in each other's dreams kind of, which just was not an element of either of the first two movies. And also Nancy's ability is just crazy. Like, I don't know. I mean, I get, I understand that after six years, she would obviously like develop that type of ability, but it just has nothing to do with the stuff that was going on in the first movie. I don't know. And while it's good that they are coming up with fresh ideas for the plot and stuff, I really appreciate that. However, when the consistency just isn't there for several movies, like literally for the first three movies, that's kind of when you start to lose me a little bit. This also definitely felt more like a superhero movie to me and that's fine, but I just prefer modern superhero movies. I feel like superhero movies were just trying to do too much back then and they just weren't really that successful. So it was kind of a strange, almost accidental mixing of the genres. I have yet to see a successful dark superhero movie. Brightburn was fine. I don't know. I wasn't that big of a fan of it. It, le it let me down. So it was just kind of an odd genre mixing to me. There were also really small things, like there was that girl that was a heroin addict, I'm assuming, and then there was that nurse that was like trying to get her to do drugs and stuff, and like I get that for the sake of the plot and letting the audience know that she formerly had this drug problem, that was their tool and way to tell us. However, I just feel like there could have been a way more tasteful way to do that than having this really aggressive nurse, because that's just not, it's not realistic, okay? Okay, well, it is, but also like it shouldn't be. So moving on, there's also this teenager, but he looks really young. Like he could be like 15 or something. And he just lusts after one of the nurses. And then he's having a dream where she's like getting naked and coming on to him, which if it's a dream, fine. Like teenage boys lust after grown adult women. But the fact that she as an actress actually did have to get like naked from the waist up and like, 
come on to him and stuff was very off-putting to me. Just like not really appropriate. And the last thing was there was that scene where that guy was fighting the like CG skeleton. I'm not 100% sure if it was CG, but like I'm pretty sure because it looks kind of goofy. But those are all just kind of nitpicky things. I don't have anything else really sweepingly negative to say about the movie. So overall to conclude, quite a few people told me that I would really love this movie. Um, I didn't love it. I thought it was fine. Like I had a good time watching the movie. It's definitely super rewatchable. It was a lot of fun. A lot of the practical effects were super cool. Love my girl Nancy. There was a lot going for this movie. I just didn't think it was like as great as a lot of people make it out to be. Maybe it's just because it hasn't aged super well. I don't know. Like, cause it could be a generational thing and that's just not my preferred style of cinema. I'm not really sure, but um, I did like it, just didn't love it. Um, it was a good movie, just not great. And also maybe it's because everyone hyped me up so much and I was hyping myself up. I really tried to go in and like lower my expectations, but I was just so, I was so excited because this is one of everyone's favorites. And once I get excited about something, I'm not like, like if you've, if you've seen my review of Never Hike Alone and like my PR unboxing and my trailer reaction, I get excited about things, okay? I can't help it. Like I can't dole down my excitement. So I was just way too excited going into this movie, I think. And so it was just too hard to lower my expectations. And so they were, they were too high. But as always, let me know what your thoughts are on everything that I said down below. Your comments are always welcome. I love to read them. If you want to follow me on social media, my Instagram, Twitter, and Letterboxd are all at Kai Johns. So go ahead and follow me over there. On Letterboxd, I talk about the movies that I don't intend on talking about on my channel so I give them reviews and ratings and stuff and then on Instagram I always post about what movie I'm watching that day so that you can watch them too just in case I do a review of it and then I also post whenever I go thrifting and I buy new movies and stuff so just it has a lot of horror related content on there as well so check it out enjoy and as always please check out the petitions and the GoFundMe's linked down below and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope I catch you in the next one bye Ow.